Now that the stock is finished, it's time to work on the bow portion of the crossbow, also known as the prod. Now on this bow, the prod is made out of 1 inch Schedule 40 white plumbing pipe. Now today I'm going to be using the furniture grade pipe. But if you wanted to keep the price lower, say around $10 or so, you could use a piece of white plumbing pipe. You're going to need a piece of pipe that's 30 inches long. So this is a 30 inch long piece of 1 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. If you want the bow to be lighter, just make it a little longer. I do not suggest you make this prod any shorter though because we're getting close to this pipe's maximum draw length. Since I'm using furniture grade pipe, this is what I'm going to start with. Once you have your pipe measured out to 30 inches long, you want to mark the center at 15 inches, just so you know where the center is, so we can flatten using the center and align the bow up to the stock using the center. Now we're going to taper the limbs of our prod. What we need to do is heat the prod up one half at a time and then press it to a taper using one of these jigs. Now this is one of my favorites, it's an adjustable jig, but you can also make a jig with fixed spacers. You just want to make sure that your spacers are one inch tall for this particular build. Today I'm going to be using my heat box back here, but you can do this with a heat gun, torch, over a fire, over a stove top. Any heat source will allow you to work this pipe. So I'm going to flatten this and I'll show you what that looks like. Once your pipe is hot enough and flexible where you can flatten it with a finger, you're going to take it bring your flattening jig to the center of the handle mark and then press it down. Once the pipe is cool, remove the jig and here you have a nice taper. So now you just have to go and taper the other side. Here's what the pipe looks like after it's been tapered. So now we're going to heat up the last four inches of each limb and give the bow a little bit of a recurve. Now this recurve is important because it'll actually help us string the bow up. So all you want to do is heat up the last four inches until it's just soft enough to form. Alright, so now you just want to form these, just a little bit of a recurve, doesn't need to be too heavy. And we want it just a little further down. There's a re recurve. So you want it to be about two inches of recurve. As you can see, there's about a two inch distance between this tip and the rest of the limb. Just want to make sure that it's even with the rest of the limb. Now you just need to heat up the other side and match this recurve. A little trick to help you match your recurves is to place the bow upside down on a piece of wood or a flat board. This way you can really gauge and see if both of your recurves are even. Then you can make any adjustments if needed on this board. Now that the recurves are done, we're going to heat the center of the bow and shape it. We're also going to be adding some deflux to this bow and the deflux is going to help make the bow more stable. Now that's going to, we're going to sacrifice a little bit of speed for stability but in the end, having a very stable bow is a good thing when you have a crossbow. And this works the same for both this colored pipe and white pipe. 
So all I'm going to do is heat up about four inches of the center. So now you've seen it's puffed out a little bit, so we're going to flex this back, you can get your board, and with your board you want to make sure that there's about three inches, so let's form this by hand for a little bit, you want to make sure that this transition is nice and smooth and you're aiming for about three inches of, of deflex here. So you want to take this and make sure that there's about three inches of deflex. Now while the pipe is still warm, you want to take it and actually force it down to one side. You want to sort of center, or you want to flatten one side completely. This will allow the string to track closer to the center, or closer to the top of the bow. And that will allow the, the crossbow to fire a little more true, or shoot more true. Just put a little more deflex. That is about, it's about two and a half, about two and a half to three inches of deflex is good. There we go. All right, I've gone ahead and finished off the tips. To do these, all I did was I measured in a half an inch from either side, and that gives you a piece here that's a little less than one inch. Now, it's still kind of a wide tip, but it looks a little better than just leaving it straight. Using a knock file or a tile saw, you want to cut knocks into the sides here. Now I'm cutting my knocks about a half an inch from the end, and I want them to be about a quarter inch or so deep. So this is going to come out to about three quarter of an inch between these two. You don't want it to be any thinner than that, or you could snap the tip off. You want, to the, you want this to be pretty robust. So, I've gone ahead and cut these on this side just so you can see what they look like. From here, I'm going to go with sandpaper, round them off. You want to make sure that there are no sharp edges here. That'll really help save your string and increase its life and also create, uh, get rid of any stress points here that could cause this to snap. I've gone ahead and rounded out the knocks. So now the prod is finished and ready to go. All we have to do is attach it to the tiller. So to do this, you could use any type of strong cord. I'm going to be using paracord. And you're going to need about 15 feet of cord to wrap the prod on. Before we attach the prod to the tiller, we're going to want to protect the center section against abrasion from the tiller itself and from any outside things because this is the most vulnerable part of the bow. If this part gets damaged bad enough the bow will break. You can do a lot of things with this. You can take a piece of leather and stitch it on. You can wrap it with leather, wrap it with cord. Just as long as the cord when wrapped around here isn't large enough so that it doesn't fit into the stock. Now if you need to, you can always sand this and make this a little bigger, but you want to keep this about the same size. So I'm going to be using some paracord with the inner strands removed, so some gutted paracord. And I'm just going to wrap around here. You're going to need about, about 10 feet of paracord to do this wrap. So here I have my center mark, and I've marked 2 inches from either side, giving me a total of 4 inches. You want this to be even because you're going to be using this as a reference when lining up the bow in the tiller. But it's really simple. You just want to start right underneath that first mark 
and just bring this around. And just overlap it like that. And you want to wrap tightly, but just wrap all the way down to the end. So once you've gotten down to about four or five wraps to the end, you just want to make your final wraps lightly and over your finger. This way we know, or we have some extra in order to finish up this wrap. So, looks like, looks like five. Uh, let's see. Looks like... About five will do it. So once you've gotten down to here, you want to take your loose end, pass it up through, and then starting from the top, you want to use this and just wrap over this loose end here. Let's bring it up. Just wrap as tight as you can. All right, once you've wrapped all the way, just pull this loose end through. Now you want to twist as hard as you can. Just go ahead and twist it just to make sure that it's nice and tight. And then pull the loose end through. Push everything together. Make sure it's lined up. You can see it's nicely between our two markings here. So here's our wrap. I just want to go and trim the loose end. There it is. All right, I'm going to show you guys one method to wrap the prod onto the stock. First thing you want to do is make sure that the stock is aligned. It should look fairly even as long as both limbs have about the same degree of taper and look pretty consistent. Any kind of fixes that we need to do can be done after the bow is attached. So any adjustments and tiller can be done later. So we're just going to attach it now so we can work on the bow and get everything working properly. I've got my 15 feet of cord. I'm going to start by taking this and bringing it through this hole. And just hold on to it. And you take this, you bring it up over and then across. So you can see I brought it up and across the front. You see right across the front. Now you want to pull that pretty tight and wrap up. So you want to wrap up and around one full rotation or one, one full wrap, one full turn. And then holding this cord tight still, I'm going to bring this back over the front and then into the hole. So you can see now I've got one wrap all the way around here, and then two going across the front. And pass that through the hole again. All right, I'll make sure that's nice and tight. And should be pretty tight, okay. So now we bring this up, and just like we did before, we cross over, over the front. So now we've got two wraps on one and one on the other side. Bring it around the front here again and over this limb. We want that to be pretty tight. So one full turn and then you want to bring this across. 
Once you've done that, I'm going to pull it as tight as you can and then bring it through the hole. Now as you're going you'll notice that it doesn't feel very tight. We're going to be doing a little additional wrap just to tighten everything up later. So it's not too important how tight it is right now. Now that you've got that, you should be able to let go of your loose cord. And then, coming up from this side, you just want to go around the front. And you want to go on the inside of the other wrap. That will help tighten the other wrap and lock this one into place and keep it from sliding out of the way. And then you just take this and run it back through the hole. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So bring it up. On the inside of the other wrap. Pull that tight. And then pass it through. And then that's the basic wrap. This is plenty strong and will hold this prod in place. It does give you a little bit of give so you can twist this around and move it around as you want, but it will hold it in place from shot to shot. And it's not gonna come apart on its own. Now that you've done that, what you wanna do is go from the side here, take your cord and then pass it all the way under. I like to bring it back just to lock it in place. And what you're actually doing two things here. You're locking this thread in place, but you're also giving yourself a little bit of gap because we're gonna wrap this all the way down. So now you wanna pass this through again, one more time. This is through one more time. And then bring it up to the top here. You want to give one more wrap. So this is a third wrap. And once you've done this third wrap up here, and again, you want to do it on the inside. Take this cord and then pass it underneath so inside and you'll have one bundle here and pass it around that bundle bring it around and then pass it through and under the other bundle you see like that now you want to pull as tight as you can. This is going to tighten up your entire wrap. So the tighter you can get this right now, the better the wrap will be. You just pull as tight as you can. And then you want to lift this whole bundle, pass this underneath. Pass this whole bundle underneath, and then you can start to wrap. So I'm just going to wrap all the way around, all the way until I get to the bottom. And this is what it looks like when you've wrapped down to the end. Once you get down to here, just pass the cord through the hole here. Now to the other side, so you can do the exact same thing. Just wrap it up, over, 
do that figure eight and then wrap it down. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now that you're done wrapping, everything should be pretty tight. I mean, this isn't gonna come off on its own. These ends can be left loose and I like keeping them loose so that if I need to, for some reason, rewrap it, I'm not gonna cut any of this. That way, if I need to rewrap it later, I have cord on hand or on the bow to do any repairs. So I can take it off and then rewrap it and still have extra to work with. So what I'll do with this end, this loose end here, is I'll bring it under and push it under these wraps. This thing's pretty tight, so it's a little easier said than done. Okay. Take this loose end and pull it down and then stick it into the hole. I'll take this end, bring it through, and now I'm just sort of going to loop it around and around, just like I did that other piece. Just press the cord under this side, bring it down as tight as I can, and then pass it through this hole. And you just want to keep going back and forth until you've used up all of your extra cord. All right. Once you've come to your final pass, you want to make sure that this last loop that you made is a little loose. Pass the other side through. And then you just want to make it as tight as you possibly can. It's kind of short, so it's not going to get too tight. And then you just stuff the loose end into this hole here. If you need to get it out, you just kind of pull this in and you can undo the wrap. So just kind of stuff it in there. Your wrap is all done.